Good evening everyone and thanks for, for joining us tonight. It's really a pleasure to, to have you guys here tonight. And uh, I saw all of you came to the meetup group. Um, and some of you have been also communicating via LinkedIn. So that's two mediums and, and it's really been quite a quite a journey, I think. Um, I don't know how long you some of you might have been on meetup for a while and some of you might have just joined. Um, I actually had a group on Meetup a few years ago, the Meetup group, and um, I lost that group unfortunately to someone else, but I started a new one. Um, I had about 2,000 members, so I'm going to build this one up again. Um, so what I want to talk about is how to foster the mindset for success, right? And um, the thing is that um, we all obviously want to achieve success, nobody wants to get failure. And uh, if you remember the, the, the name of the group, which is the Cape, um, Cape, the Mindset of Billionaires, right? So it's quite a, I think, a catchy sort of title, that catchy um, name. Um, and also, the reason why I said Mindset of Billionaires is because um, billionaires or just wealthy people have a different mindset from people who are not wealthy. Um, and it's, it's really about the mindset. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. If you don't have the mindset to be successful, you're not going to be successful. That's, that's what I believe. Um, so some of you can just debate that if you like, but um, that's, that's my opinion, okay? So I want to talk a bit about... Um, I don't want to talk too much about my life, but let me just give you a bit of background. Um, I come from a corporate background, I've been in business for 20 years, doing consulting for big organizations, and uh, also now in the whole digital sort of landscape, the digital age, can everybody hear me clearly? Okay, um, it's been quite a, just with all this technology, technological advances, a lot of people are, especially with artificial intelligence and robotics, a lot of people are feeling you know, what's going to happen to my job maybe 10 years, 20 years down the line? Especially young people as well. Um, what, what career should I go into? What, if I start a business, what kind of business should I be doing? Um, the landscape over the last few years has changed. And I've been very close to the technology space because I've helped a lot of corporates transform from the old um, sort of more low tech manual sort of industrial type age to the technology age. Um, where we find ourselves now for the digital age. Um, maybe what we can do before I go further, I just want to quickly go around the room and get a feel of who you are and maybe introduce yourself to each other and myself as well. Um, so, you know I'm Hussein Patel, the organizer of the meetup group. So, if you can just go around the table and just, in, just your name and maybe a short, maybe what you do, what you know, what you're doing, your business, or your have a career and just say what you do. Can you start with it? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Jolina Kandiman. I am a senior product owner. Um, I've been working in IT for um, 14 years. Um, yeah, I've worked in corporate and also medium and other medium sized companies. Um, <laughs> Hi, my name is Kenyon Wagner. Um, I am also a product manager. <laughs> I've been working in the IT space for 11 years now, um, as my colleague. <laughs> and um, yeah, I've been in the automotive, the uh, blue chip, the health and high metal sector of the IT, the IT area within those organizations. And, my, it's just, I'm just nursing my day as I'm going along. I'm just trying to find other areas or explore other avenues in terms of uh, growing up and success at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, I'm Lydia. My background is that it's not an Thank you. 
is not set for success, nothing you learn, nothing you know, nothing you do will make much of a difference. Have you even experienced that like no matter how hard you try at something, just keep and the harder you work, it just seems the more that thing sort of evades you. Um, a lot of times you some, some, somehow achieve success but you never sort of reach that level. You can't just stay at the same level, you might go up and down, but you can't just stay that same bracket of income. Where your income might, income might increase, but you know, it just it doesn't really help because um, expenses, cost of living increases anyway, so you're just kind of living above the deadline of the time, or just under the deadline, whatever the case, but you never really get to the next level. So that kind of for me describes what I'm talking about. So I'm not saying, again, money is everything. You know, there's a lot of, unfortunately, what, what's happening that I just um, read, uh, or watched a video the other day about Bruce Lipton, and, you know, Bruce Lipton, Dr. Bruce Lipton, and he says that within the first six years of your life, so from one to six years old, that is when all this, the programming, you basically your life is decided within that period, because all the your parents and the people that you meet sort of have an impact. So that basically decides how you're going to live your life. And I think I talk about that a bit later on. What happens between within the first six of your life, years of your life? That's quite important. Okay. So a lot of people unfortunately find put a plain island. You know, you might be stuck in a dead end job and where you stagnate and where you are feel stagnated. Uh, you're stagnating and you, and you feel frustrated, you're not really moving or you promoted. Your income's increasing, you might be that way, I don't know. Um, you might be in a business that's just not really taking off, it's not really growing. Um, the difference with different people. Um, so that I call, that's what I call playing island. You know, you want to be stuck on this island and you want to get off. You want to go somewhere else, you don't want to be there in that place. Okay, some of you might feel that way now, or might have felt that way at some point in your life. Okay. So, so what I want to tell you is that you're in the right place if you you know, you feel frustrated, you feel stuck. Um, you worry maybe about the future, about your health, about your job, uh, you're stressed about money, um, you're paying bills at the end of the month, all those things. Um, tired of, you know, maybe you've tried out getting a coach, or maybe you've um, downloaded programs from the internet or whatever, tried out hypnosis, meditation, all sorts of things, and it just didn't work for you. Okay. Um, so, uh, so as a scientist, I, I, I really, I really sort of, I really value the, the sort of contribution that science makes to our lives because science is a very intricate process or very um, detailed process in terms of how you actually come about um, deciding certain things in your life, what's happening, um, why certain things take place in your life, or why, for example, why are we here as a human species? A lot of the big questions can be asked by science, and some of them still need to be answered by science. And then also depends on the belief we have, which is the religious beliefs that might differ or might be in contradiction with science, because that's another matter. But I'm not going to go there. But what I want to tell you is, in terms of, if point to evolution, is um, we as humans have been around on this planet for about 250,000 years. Okay? So let's, let's look at that in terms of how long life has been on this planet. Or more than three billion years. Okay. So we still, in terms of evolutionary times, we are a very young species. Does that make sense? Because you know, other animals and life has been, other forms of life, life has been around and they've evolved a lot further than we have. Um, and, um, but really, we're not really that much different from other species, other than the fact that, that what we can do in terms of our tools, technologies, and science that we you know, um, actually invented, or the things we've invented, uh, the basic things we've invented, like a cell phone, got the space and all those things, and that has actually different, made us different from other species. But be that as it may, um, yet we're still struggling to actually come to terms with our own reality, you know. Um, what, are, what are the issues that we're grappling with and we're still struggling with? Issues like poverty, um, having the sort of poverty mindset in the Arctic and things like that. So we'll talk a bit about that. Um, and also they say the first baby that will live to 200 years has already been born. So that means our children or our grandchildren will most likely live a lot longer than we do and they might have multiple careers, okay, three or four careers because of the length of their lives um, and because of you know the advances in science and medicine and so on. 
And also we were grappling with the fact that you know the robots, the robots might take over our lives, our jobs in that way. Um, luckily there's nothing to be interesting in, in the very near future, it's a very infant, it's very much in the infant stages at this point. That's a good news. So unleash your flow of violence. So uh, you in the right place if you feel that you need you want to unleash your flow of violence. Um, for you, you can open up your heart and soul to any and put the potential. So we'll talk about having an open heart and having an open mind, why that's important. Okay? If you really could do that, basically what I'm saying, you need to open up your heart to earn and put your potential. But we'll talk about that. So what we're going to cover today, um, what you learn to learn, what you're going to learn at this event. Learn how to create a different mindset. So, like I said, um, if you don't have the right mindset, you're not going to achieve your goals. For example, let me give you an example. If you're a smoker, so a smoker has a specific mindset about smoking. So they think that they need to smoke, they're addicted to, well, they're, basically they are addicted to cigarettes. But, but they can't see themselves, for example, as being a non-smoker. So they have the mindset of being a smoker. So it's difficult for them to transcend to being a non-smoker, to transform themselves into being a non-smoker. That's what I'm talking about. That's an example. So once, you have, once a smoker has a different mindset of, now I'm not a smoker and I have a non-smoker mindset, it's easy for them to become a non-smoker. Does that make sense in the way? Okay. So we use the same kind of analysis. That's the analogy that I use. And it basically applies to anything any kind of addiction or fiction or kind of suffering that you have in your life. So learn how to live your vision. So that's what I'm going to talk about. What is your vision? A lot of people don't even know what really they're going to be in the next five to ten years or what they want. Um, they can't even define it correctly. So, so learn how to cultivate a higher level of consciousness. Do you know that, for example, again, just is putting the analogy of animals. Animals and, and ourselves as humans, um, we basically not that much different. The only thing that differentiates us from animals um, is the fact that we have intelligence. And the other thing is that we can, because of the intelligence, not only because of that, but we can do everything consciously. So animals are born, we are born. Animals die, we die. Animals eat and sleep, and we eat and sleep. But we can do everything we do consciously. That's the difference. Does it make sense? So we can actually, we completely aware. We can be completely aware of what we do.
So the first one is vision. So what is your vision? Okay. And have a vision for yourself. So why is this important? When you have a vision, um, there's a part of the brain that in, in a way acts like a GPS system that says do this, do that, go this way, go that way. And this is how you figure out um, where you need to go. And um, so how you can versus why you can't, why you must versus why you should be. So once you have a vision, it's almost like you know you almost know the next steps. That's sort of just start a point for point place. So if you don't have a vision, what needs to happen is that you are leaving money on the table, you're losing money. Okay, you feel disconnected, you're not sure where you're going, uh, you know, like relationships and all, uh, the finances may suffer in the process. And uh, but the reward of having a vision, you'll stop sabotaging yourself, wasting your time on things that are not really contributing to your vision. Um, stop delaying, because you know that is something that you need to achieve. So once you see your vision quite clearly, um, and you understand what your vision is, you can actually visualize it. Um, that actually helps a lot. Okay. And uh, so I'm sure you all know on and this is what he says about the vision. The most important thing is to have a vision. You have to have a goal. I have a vision that I want to be the greatest body of all time. Of all time, I guess what? That's what he achieved. Okay. So, so if I can give you some tips on, on, on how to create a vision for yourself, make a vision bigger than what you think you can possibly achieve. The only thing you know how to achieve. That if you think you can achieve an income example of Two million grand a year. Push that to three million. You know, push yourself to, to the next level. Just further beyond your what you think you can achieve. Um, never set your goals within your sights, but beyond your beyond what you think you can achieve. Um, and that might be different for different people. So depends on where you are at this point as well. So invest it on your plan and tell yourself this is what you need to focus on. Okay. And a vision might. It take you three to five years to ten years, whatever it is, you know, the, the bigger the vision, the longer it might take you. So you know, the bigger the income, the longer it might take you. So if you want to, a vision that, you want to make a decent life yourself, it's going to take you a period of time. If you want to live a lavish life, it's going to take you a bit longer, right? So <laughs> that's just how it is. Um, so in the, I, I wrote a program that I offer my clients and I talk about that and it's called the Wealthy Tool Program. And within that program, I talk about how to actually develop or articulate your vision properly, okay, or craft your vision, and how to make focus your brain on your vision. Um, so I talked about the next step is keep an open mind, and so why, why must you keep an open mind? So why, why is it important? So the universe wants to give you things and starts to spin in disbelief and know that everything is coming. So, so what do we always tell ourselves when we think, just think about something. Let's say, for example, you want to buy a new car. That's your dream car. So what do you tell yourself? What is the first thing you tell yourself when you think about that car? Yes, I can't afford it, right? That's the first thing that comes. And what, what is, why do you say that to yourself? Why do you think you're saying that? Why, why do you think that's the first thing that's coming to your mind? Is this in your current financial position? Yes, but, but it's actually, yes, that's just true, but it's really better about your belief. Because you believe that you don't have what it takes. Uh, you don't believe that you have what it takes. And that's why I say suspend your disbelief that you can actually do the thing that you want. Um, and the fact that you can actually achieve that. Um, so the cost, if you don't have an open mind and take action, you cannot receive what the universe is giving you. Remember, the universe is there to give you what you want. It's, it's coming to you. But the fact that you actually are having this negative mindset of, I can't afford it, I'm not good enough, you know, that kind of social program, program which I talked about in the first six years of your life which we talked about. That stuff is not coming to you. It's on its way but you're blocking it. Okay? Let's put it that way. So you will see what you ask for. So once you remove that block, you open up your mind and say to yourself, well, don't, like instead of saying, I can't afford it, tell yourself, how can I afford it? How can I do it? So that should be what you should be saying.
And, and with technology and with um, the slides made in psychology, you can actually change your mindset within a very short period of time. Um, and you can, the my program, what the I offer, if I do, for example, one day program, it can take you six hours. In six hours, I can change your mindset. And you may come to but the is programs available can do it a lot shorter, uh, which I'm still developing um, my own as well. But at the moment, um, I can basically almost guarantee that I can change your life within six hours. Okay. So for the first two years of, from before, the first two years of this, we are in the lowest frequency. Uh, what, what I want to say there was the first two years, from the first two years before you were born, or the first or from before you were born up to the first two years, so it's up to the child's two years old, um, we are at the lowest frequency. I think it's called theta, okay? So in the theta frequency, all you're doing is you're just taking the information, okay? So the program that we acquired in the first six years shape our way to live our life. What parents or people tell us, um, people around us tell us, we become. So what even people tell us we become. If someone says you're not good enough, your parents have told you you're not good enough, that's what you believe as a child. And that's what you believe as an adult when you grow up. Okay? So all of us have seen the program of not good enough, not the best we can be. So we never really live up to our full potential simply because within the first six years of our lives, we've been told you're not good enough by someone or people. Around you, your parents, your teachers, your neighbors. There are ways to change the program if you know how to push the right buttons. So how to get started in this, this area, how to get results. Go beyond your personal doubts, limitations, and complacency. Being ready to learn and take action. Okay. So once you start applying your mind um, and start doing things towards your vision, towards your goals, um, that will start disappearing. And um, we'll talk a bit about also why people don't really get started in the first place or so. So what I do teach you in my program is how to change your limiting beliefs, how to become open to new ideas, and open your heart to, to, to mind, and mind to well environment. So you, you only, your income can only go to extend you as a person. Okay. So I just want to talk a bit about um, these are some of my clients. Uh, this is a lady in the United States. Um, she also struggled with you know, getting new clients. And you can see within the first few months, um, she actually signed up quite a, a few new clients. And this is another client of mine. So I helped her um, you know, increase her wealth and abundance. And simply because I, I gave her wealth, but I asked her several questions about you know, how she manages money, uh, what is the situation in terms of wealth and money? And then I started opening up the eyes in terms of what, what's actually really happening. Okay. Um, and this is also another client of mine. Um, so she she's actually a millionaire today because within two years um, she's just, she inherited property and all of a sudden the business started going as well. So maybe that's because of the own achievements or by chance, by nonetheless, um, she achieves that success, okay? So the wish, um, that's the second or the third point I'd like to make. Um, so the secret meaning of the wish will call. So often when we talk about, when we think about what we want, whether it be the best relationship or whether we want material things like money and cars and houses that are the house that the dream home that you want. Um, do we actually imagine that that quite clearly and what kind of emotion do we have when we're actually looking at a picture of that house or we see that house? Okay. So example, think about what you what's your short term goal. Just keep that in your mind for a few seconds and say and, and what, what what is the emotion going through you at that point? Is it a good emotion? Is it a positive emotion? So what happens is that if you can actually feel the feeling as if you will really achieve that goal. Um, that's quite important because you need to actually 
Um, that does become a part of your being, right? So you must imagine that you will really see what you want. So, you, so that's why the other verb is wealth or affirmations. You should never say, I'm going to have because I'm going to be wealthy. It's, I am wealthy or I am rich, I am successful. Okay, so people tend to, when you say, I'm going to have that house, the universe says, okay, but that could be next year or 20 or 10 years or never. Okay. So that's the response you get from the universe when you start thinking in that. So when you think um, about what you want to do, what you desire, what you desire, you should think in terms of the present moment. That's and you should feel that, okay, emotionally, as if it's there already. So what is the feeling that 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 thing would evoke? So if you imagine you are in your dream moment, example, is that what you want to achieve? So what did that feel like to you? Happy, comfortable, you feel wealthy. Can you feel that feeling right now? That's that's the thing, yeah. and and it is possible. <coughs> and uh, so, when it comes to goals and, and your wishes and your desires, make sure that you always um, have clear goals and really this specific goals about what you want. So, if it's in terms of your income. What is the exact amount? Let's say I want more money. That's not a, that's not a clear enough goal. Okay. Um, so make it say I want to earn 200,000 then a month within the next six months, for example, or off the tax income, um, or to pay my first person of my debt within these two years. We can see example here. Um, and I'm hoping that if you do even achieve that, you will keep your income goal, that you also save part of it. What what Jim and other motivation speakers what what they also says, and he's from I mean he's from America, so he's speaking dollars, but he's speaking them things. Every dollar, on um, seventy percent, seventy cents must go to expenses, ten percent must go to investments, ten percent must go to savings, and ten percent must go to charity. Okay, so that's the principle. Again, I mean the seventy cent being, but I'm just saying. When you split up your income, that's how you should split it up. If you save it, invest it to make profit. Also giving the charity and explain a bit why that's important. And expenses should only consume 70% of your income, not more than that. Okay. So with the, the idea that escape will be easy in your mind, one of the reasons why you were not successful in the past because you were told it will be hard. So I think that's an important point. A lot of people tell you, oh, you know, um, you mean this financial predicament where you um, want to go to the next level or get a promotion, but it's going to be hard. And you keep telling yourself it's going to be hard, it's going to be difficult. So what do you think is going to happen? It ends up being difficult, right? Am I right? The moment you say, tell yourself it's going to be hard, then it ends up being hard, right? <clears throat> but the truth is, it's actually not the case. Assume, assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So, so what I teach you in my program about that specific um, step, and, and this is, I'll talk about it again, but this is a seven step process. So, how to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled, how to focus on what you're aiming to create instead of the problem. So, we always talk about, think about, you know, when we have a problem, we always think about the problem, but we need to think about how to solve the problem. So, we always think about the problem, but we don't think about the solution. So we focus on the problem, but we don't focus on how to get out of, out of that situation. And this ends up, if it's about the finances, we need, and we never we focus on the problems, what happens? We become a slave to, to money. Um, and in that, in that, you know, we become experienced financial slavery, not a financial freedom, financial independence. Who can give me a different, what is your definition of financial? Who wants to give me a definition of financial independence? Because a lot of people don't understand what financial independence financial is. The part of me that I have whatever I want for the benefit of me and others is that I need consideration. So I can you repeat that? Yeah. The power and ability to do whatever I want mm -hmm. for the benefit to me and others is the only consideration. That's a good, that's a good definition. Well, the environment is a good benefit. Anybody else? The Shady definition of financial independence. Okay, this is. Um, 
Okay, my definition is uh, to for my passive income yeah. to be more than my expenses then I know if my passive income is more than my expenses then I know I've achieved my financial freedom. Okay, that's not bad either. But let me give you this one. <coughs> so financial independence is the ability to live fully live for your own uh, the income of your own private resources. Does that make sense? The ability to pay um, the purely level of the income of your own personal or private resources. So in other words, you don't have to rely on a job, you don't have to rely on anyone else. So all your own assets will provide enough income for you to survive. So you know, you might be investing in property, in the rent of that property, and that's enough to sustain you for your expenses. Um, this is an example, but I mean, there's so many different ways you can generate income from your personal resources. Um, could be a variety of things property, shares, investments, um, business, etc. Okay. So, I put together a plan for you to get these major results, bigger and long lasting results. So, it's not, you don't want to just have enough income. A good income for the next year or next two years, but for the rest of your life, and you also want to have enough retirement, or you want to save up so that you can retire early um, or whenever you decide to. And um, you know, you want to actually move to the next level. So, if you example, I don't know what your income is, but um, if, you, if you're starting at zero, you might want to move to 400 to 600,000 a year. If you're starting at 600 to 800,000, but here you want to move to um, 1 million, 2 million, etc. You know, those are just examples, so there's different levels of income. Um, and with that, what my clients are looking at, what are they earning currently, and what for them is an actually, I wouldn't say realistic income, but something that's real for them. You know, I don't like the word realistic, because the moment you say realistic, it's like, you know, something I can achieve it, it's like when you achieve it, it's just like, is that all I can do? Not that it doesn't motivate you. So a realistic income never motivates anyone. What do you think? Yeah. If you just increase your income by 10, 20%, because you think that's realistic, do you think that motivates you to achieve it? No, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. So you think that's a realistic income? Yeah. 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 It, it, can, it, it, will, it can be realistic, but it's going to be beyond realistic, a bit beyond realistic, you know. There's going to be something that's a bit up in your sights. Assume the feeling of wish fulfill, so, so this, is, um, this is what I was talking about earlier, the seven step process. When you talk about the seven step, you always hear about the seven steps to financial freedom, the seven steps to whatever, better health, you know. The three keys to, but I'm not just saying that because I want to sound like you know, it's not just a marketing spiel. It's actually very carefully designed. The seven steps that I've developed around uh, seven step blueprint is actually very specifically designed to get you from where you are to moving into a different space in terms of the income. And I'll tell you why. So just use I'll use this as an analogy. If you try to open a lock combination lock from say for example. Um, and it's got to obviously a combination, so you've got to, you know, input the numbers, turn it um, in a certain sequence. What if you do the numbers, input the numbers in the wrong sequence? What do you think is going to happen? Sorry? Exactly. Now that's how my works. So that's, the steps that I talk about is actually in a very specific sequence. And it's very specific steps that it must be done in a specific sequence. And that's what I've been taught. Um, I've learned this from the mindfulness concept of, you can look it up, um, Dr. John Cap Professor John Kappertzen, and he developed this um, mindfulness program, which actually combines science and Buddhism, you know, Eastern philosophy. And uh, it all comes from this. So he says, when you actually go through the specific steps, right, and some of the steps are described, you open up your mind in a certain way to do that. Um, you actually, your mind starts you, you can transform your mind and actually sort of, in a way, access your subconscious. Like I said, you know, within the first six years of your life, 
all that negative programming, social programming, conditioning has been put in your brain, your subconscious, which you just cannot get rid of, some can't get rid of, but I'm giving away from the room. And so the, the seven steps actually gets almost in a way unlocks your, your mind, your subconscious, so that you can change. Like, does it make sense? Because subconscious is obviously something that you can't really see or you can't, it's not a tangible thing, but, it, but we, we understand in terms of context that it does exist, right? So you've got the conscious mind and subconscious mind. So when you, when you think of it, when you use your conscious mind, you know this is what, you, what's, what's, what you're doing, what you're thinking, but your subconscious mind, you don't know what's in there. Okay, so that's, that's the tricky part. <coughs> So I just feel some ingredients you need for your envisioning, goal setting, and creating the right mindset so you can get these results. The main thing you need to focus on, which are all of us actually possess, um, is actually to change our own mindset. It's a natural skill that we all have, we just need to learn that skill. And if you keep using the techniques and principles I teach you, your whole life will change. This may be your only chance of finally changing financial status. So, is there any questions at this stage? Before I go on. So, what, so, have you got any comments? Do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you disagree? Do you disagree? Do you disagree? Do you disagree? I think maybe the day practice is where the challenge is. Yeah. And, and implementing it is the same. Yeah. It starts off all to, you know. Okay, okay, let me give you an example. Um, what, what, the, the, the whole, the whole core that this is based on is actually about your motivation and your willpower. So, what if I tell you, you know, I want, uh, what if you come to me, let's say I was a fitness coach, you know, and you come to me and you say you want to lose weight. Can I tell you, um, you know what? All you need to do is you know that the cake that you have in your house, throw it out. The, you know, all the bad junk food that you have, you know, throw it out so you don't see it. Um, or if you do have anything in your house, make sure you hide it from yourself. Uh, or don't buy um, you know, junk food, or don't eat junk food. And you all these instructions that I tell you what to eat. And how effective do you think that's going to be? So I'm basically telling you to use your determination and pure willpower to actually prevent yourself from eating those things that you don't pick up the additional weight of you know, become overweight of food as you start losing um, or trying to you need the soup to start losing weight. Why do you think so many people fight it is but it's for the better? What is the reason? Because everybody's trying and wants to. Not only my lady trying really hard. I would expect the uh, instant results. You expect it to uh, uh, for the the output of anything that we start we have uh, this notion that we expect the results that are in the name is there. That could be one reason. Yeah. I think that short term goals it's not long term it's instant gratification. Because yeah, it's like a diet as a start maybe. What if I said I could change, make you start losing weight, make you start losing weight within six hours, you won't give up, so I mean, uh, don't give up, you will be super losing weight. You yeah. believe me? No, no. Because no. like in six hours, it's like, what am I just going to change my mindset for the rest of my life? Why not? Because remember, what's actually happening is that your mind is actually constantly telling you that this cake or this food, you, it's a pleasure to eat it. So you come, because of the social programming and advertising, you are convinced that that food, it's good for you. Not good for you, but it's a pleasure to eat it. So you take so much pleasure in eating that food. With cake or junk food, and you really, because of the social programming, it's not the other reason. Okay. Because of the marketing. Because people say it tastes good and you see the pictures and you all those things. Now, let me put it to you this way. Do you know that cake itself doesn't have any taste? Cake on its own doesn't have any taste. But because of the programming and all the stuff you put on it, and you actually start in your mind, just, just eat a piece of cake or just eat a, something and start doing it consciously. So think about what you're doing. Do it slowly. You'll see 
Um, you can have different experience from this e This is all if it, uh, the user is also mindfulness um, where you eat the fruit or, or raisin or something. And you actually eat that raisin. And if you eat it with, uh, consciously, you have a completely different experience. It tastes differently. Because the marketing actually drives out this. Why do you smoke this coffee? You have experience. They know, that it's, they know that it's bad for their health. It's costing them money. I mean, there's no good reason why you should smoke. Chemical addiction. Sorry? Chemical addiction. Uh, chemical, addiction. chemical addiction. Force of habit. Sorry? Force of habit. Force of habit. But what causes the habit in the first place? Sorry? So, point of origin was peer pressure. Do you know that when, you, when, you, when the smoke is first smoked, that, 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 that cigarette tastes awful? Right? I don't know if any of you have smoked or what smoke is better, but then you would know that. Or you even smoked, even if you don't smoke it now. I mean, that first cigarette tastes horrible. I used to smoke, so I know. Here we come a long time. <laughs> that first cigarette tastes horrible. You have to force yourself to smoke it. You know, you smoke again, and you probably have to force yourself to smoke the cigarette and then think immediately, okay, you get it, say, okay, maybe this is not so bad. You know? Think about that. Why was it bad then and now it's not? But that's not good. Sorry? Exactly, they force themselves to get used to that foul taste. And kind of in their mind tell themselves that it's, you know, it's actually a pleasure. It tastes nice, it's got a great taste with different brands, with different flavors, with different, you know, with this vaping and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's the same thing with, with anything. Your mind has like mind works. So you can actually fool yourself with all marketing. And I mean, think about how do these tobacco companies make their money? At the time of marketing. Right. So the moment they plant that seed in your brain that smoking is, is pleasurable, voila, they've got the market. Yeah. So it's the same thing with, with money. Everybody's out to grab your money. Okay, spend it on this, buy this, buy the new, make this Gucci bag or whatever. You know, they're just going to grab your money. So what, where, where does that come from? It's the same thing. Social programming market. Big, big market. A big corporate. So you fall for these things, you spend your money instead of saving your money, and that leads to poverty and end up being broke. You don't really have, get yourself in debt and all sorts of things. Okay. So you, you see where I'm getting at. So that's what I'm saying, once you change the mindset and activate that wealth trigger. Um, also, with, with, with um, clients that were in debt, right? How do they you get themselves out of debt? I simply stop making debt. It's so simple. Just so stop making debt. Stop making more debt. Taking out more loans. That's the first thing to do. You know? And um, once you start, stop, stop making the debt, um, stop paying the debt. It's a simple economic <coughs> principle. But yet people are constantly getting pulled into this marketing fields of spending on this, or always spending on that, spending on the credit cards, and just copy that situation. Does it make sense? So, um, if you want to change the tools, you will have to change the roots. If you want to change the visible, you must just change the invisible. So, again, so we have to change, so what do you think that means? For example, I grow fruits on my apple tree. I have an apple tree and I'm growing apples. Um, and if I think my apples aren't growing as they should be, maybe they're a bit small or they, you know, they're not growing, they're not uh, green enough or green enough or whatever the case. What do I need to do to that tree to make it grow it? Nurture, start to nurture it, or you start understanding what the, the, the things that require to allow the things to grow with it. Yeah, but you do you, some of the apples. Sorry. You do some of the apples themselves. Very far. Exactly. So you got to do something to the roots, right? That's point of origin. Sorry? Exactly. You water the roots, you will give it the soil, fertilizer, whatever. And that's when it's better. The same with you and me. Your mind is like your roots. Okay, so you got to change something in your mindset to make things start happening. And, uh, okay, so, merely, merely having a desire doesn't make it reality. Okay. So, the fact that I want things, does that mean I'm in debt? Let's be honest. The fact that I want 
Ferrari right now. <laughs> so the fact that I have desires, does that mean it's going to manifest? In my life? No. Okay. So there's something that you need to do to get there, or something that you need to change. Um, so, so my point is, once you start following that step-by-step process of slipping in mind, you need to, uh, you start retraining your brain. You start there, instead of, oh, I need to get more income, so I'm to get a better job, okay. Yes, you can do that, but it's gonna only get you so far, right? And eventually you'll stand and you'll go back to square one. Um, so you need to be coached to keep yourself on track, and, and um, you might be feeling overwhelmed. So what I'm telling you now might feel overwhelming to you, because it might be something that you maybe you've heard some of this before, I don't know. But what I'm saying is it might be overwhelming, right? And uh, so, so I put together this this blueprint um, that I talked about a lot in the program. So it gives you sustainable results going into the future. So you don't just like I said, want to be wealthy for the next year, whatever you can for the next year, two years, three years. But throughout your life, you want to provide a safety need for your family, with life for your family, or uh, to give a better life for your kids, or your friends, or family. And uh, so, what I want you to do now is, um, on the computer, is go to that URL, and then I want you to put in that short survey, tinyurl.com, which was survey go to the L, go. You can just take a few minutes to do that, please. Um, so, what I want, the reason why um, I want you to do that, you can just wait for this for the second class. When is it up? Sorry, I'm okay. I'm expecting this one to sit down. Yeah, it does work. Oh, it's okay. Well, if you use my phone. You guys want to look at
say that to you. <laughs>
Can you think about that? Yes. <laughs> you did this German English show, and you know, ooh, I up at the beginning and kicking your gear, and you know, and two weeks down the line, it's still hard, and I can't. It's just because you don't believe it's going to work. Um, you give up. You just think it's too hard. So, so when I say never doubt yourself, be confident you can pull this off, and it's not that hard. I mean, if you can, if I can sit in a six-hour session, um, if a six-hour session uh, uh, can be even shorter than that, can change your life forever. Do you think it's worth it? Spending that money and time, whatever it is. I'm not saying my own that but anything. If you think, for example, if I go to that six, that program, it takes me six hours to change my level of health to make me you know, get the level of fitness or lose amount of weight or whatever the case. Um, it's just an example of the evening, but let's just say I want to become very fit. And I know that just spending six hours in the chain make me do the things I need to do and sustainable going forward. I'm not going to give up for two weeks or three weeks. Do you think it's worth spending that time? I think it is. Um, so, I say one of the best quotes I saw on some of the desk was the guy that owns the Formula One uh, in here. Yeah. The team in here. Um, yeah. The thing on his desk, I totally agree with myself. And uh, oh. that's a classic example of it. Yeah. Like, so that means that what he says. Yeah, but it's sitting on his desk and plays on one of those. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like that quote that says, um, if you believe you can, you're probably right. If you believe you can't, you're probably right. Probably, probably right now. Okay, so it's really about the belief, and that's why it's, once you get that past that belief that you can't do it, or once you break through that layer, you know, that's holding you back, um, it's so easy to do to achieve your goals. Okay, so, so when I talk about even doubt yourself and um, how to be, I teach you how to be confident in your decision. I think it's taken to actually go that route. Um, how to start building financial wealth, like I said. You know, there's, there's people that, in, in the States they did a study, and they found there's millions of people in just average jobs that become millions, at least millions, maybe not billions, but millions, simply by just applying principles I spoke about the same in this You might not have it overnight, but over a long period of time, you know, financial wealth goes exponentially. So, it might be taking five years, ten years to get it, but, um, like Jim Brown also says, and I was still around for years in 62, he says, um, <clears throat> if you just start, let's say you're in your 20s or your 30s, and you start, yeah, it doesn't matter what age you are, but I'm just saying, if you start somewhere, eventually, and you, one of the principles of, you know, what I talked about, splitting that dollar into 70 cents, um, 10 cents, 10 cents, and 10 cents, and you know, 70 cents expenses, and 10 cents, and 10 cents, and 10 cents, and investment savings, and profits, and charity. You see, if you just think of that principle, eventually you will become one. It's just, it's just economics, it's just pure economics. There's no, there's no fancy science to it. It's a simple principle. And how many people actually practice that? Yeah. And the thing about giving, okay, yes, giving is um, uh, uh, sort of a noble act. But a lot of people understand what effect it has because when you give something, what does it do to emotion? Because now you have control. Okay. When you spend on a credit card, you don't, you don't have control. But when you give, you know, the charity, you have control. You have that emotion, that feeling, I can do this. You know, I, I can actually do this. Okay? I help someone. So that creates a completely different mindset. So that's why it's important to give charity. And, um, that's not important to your sort of goal as well. I always put up your finances. And, um, yeah, I hope that the health is it. I hope that um, the advice 